biscuits. Corgi's leaving. Come back, Biss. Technical difficulties. Corgi down. <laughs> oh my gosh, Tristan, he slid right off of my lap. He was hanging by a front end only. Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner, free animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a squirmy corgi. And this is Conversations with a Corgi. And today he's wearing his corgi bandana because we are going to continue our talk about dogs with jobs and we're going to talk about one that is near and dear to my heart which is herding dogs i have always had corgis corgis are herding dogs i love herding dogs i love the way they work with their people i love the kinds of pets they make and i love the personality and intelligence of the herding breeds and herding dogs include Things like German Shepherds, Border Collies, Australian Shepherds, Australian Cattle Dogs, um, Sheep Dogs, of course Sheep Dogs herd Sheep, and the Corgi and lots of other um, lesser known breeds that herd. And one of the questions people often ask is, do, are dogs natural herders or do they have to be trained to herd? And in fact, herding dogs have a natural ability to control the movement of larger dogs, or larger dogs, larger animals, by nipping at them, circling them, or barking. And then if you've ever watched an Australian um, sheepdog work, and I'm sure border collies are similar from what I've seen, they really use their eyes to help move sheep and their body posture in a way that a lot of the run around and bark dogs, like a cattle dog, don't. And that's partly because Herding cattle is very different from herding sheep. Much more of a mental game herding sheep than cattle. Cattle are more like, you know, run and bark and get them together and they go. Whereas sheep are more needing to be clumped together and then moved as a group, um, which is pretty interesting to watch. Uh, herding dogs are known for um, having a great deal of intelligence and agility. And in fact, even if you don't have a herding breed, other dogs can learn to do herding. And I know people that have had, um, not necessarily a dachshund, which is a common dog to have when you have a corgi, because they are really hunting dogs and they're very different. <laughs> but if you have another breed, um, it is possible for them to learn to herd by watching your dog do his herding thing. Herding dogs are really smart. Um, and they may not be the best house pets for everybody. Certainly a border collie, if you do not give him a job, he will find a job which might not be the job that you like. That's what people say. Um, so if you have a dog that you're going to be doing things with, a border collie is a great choice. But if you don't have anything for that dog to do, you better watch out because they are really active dogs. And I love them. They're a perfect dog. I would, I would have one if I wasn't in love with the corgis. Um, so herding dogs can herd sheep, cattle. Tristan is, has got a certification in duck herding of all things. And, uh, he could also herd geese. They're a lot bigger than him. Um, I prefer to have him herd ducks because they're more down to his size. Uh, ducks don't move as quickly as geese and he's a pretty active guy. So he might be fine herding geese. Part of it is learning to take no guff from the geese who are honking and hissing at you when you're a dog that's doing herding. But plenty of corgis herd geese and ducks. Um, and corgis are also, as his father does, known for herding cattle. And I know that in parts of the West, Oklahoma, 
Midwest, um, that area, Texas, there are corgis used actively to herd cattle. Um, and certainly uh, lots of the breeds in this category herd sheep. My first corgi, Winston, we had one random uh, ewe that was at the horse barn where we were. She was a great big thing and very naughty. And she used to come running into the indoor arena and scare the horses. So Winston, one of his jobs was to keep the sheep out of the arena. And for a corgi to herd a sheep, they can do it, but it's a little difficult. Um, they have to be a little bit more mentally on their game. They can't just run and bark because the sheep will get scared and not go where you want it to. So Winston did teach himself to herd the sheep and it was a great day for him when we said, Winnie, get the sheep out of the ring. <laughs> he would come running into the ring and get the sheep to go back outside. So he could have learned to herd sheep. I don't know that he would have been a, a great sheep dog in a group of sheep, a big herd in particular, but I have many friends with border collies in this area that actually keep sheep just to keep their dogs working and active. Plus sheep are great animals to have around. So yes, herding dogs do know how to herd instinctively, but you can help them learn better herding by working with them. And one of the different, some of the major breeds used in herding are the Border Collies, of course. They're remarkably smart and active. And in fact, Chaser, the Border Collie, knows over a thousand human words. And there's a great book about Chaser, the Border Collie. Um, her person is a retired psychologist who has capitalized on her great intelligence and enthusiasm to teach her words. And he has really revolutionized a lot of um, thought in the field of animal intelligence by how he has uh, taught his dog many, many, many words. And in fact, she is able to learn new words um, if he puts a new object in a pile, one she's never seen, and he says, get the whatever, and it's a word she's never heard, she's able to distinguish that that is a new word and that the new toy must go with the new word. This is major signs of intelligence and Certainly, only a few people are smart enough to figure out how to do that with a dog and realize that that is part of dog intelligence. But it is owing to the great um, concentration of Border Collies that uh, Chaser's uh, person has been able to do this with her. And then, of course, there's regular Collies, the Collies like Lassie. They are great herders. Um, Australian Shepherds, there's a couple of different kinds. There's the fluffy, long-haired one that looks like a Collie. Those are sheepdog herders, and they're really popular pets as well. Uh, pretty mellow and easygoing and quite a healthy breed. A lot of people now have the miniature Australian Shepherds. They are not so good at herding, and they have a few more health problems, having been bred down to their small size. And then the old English Sheepdog and the Bearded Collie, all of those kind of sheep herding dogs with the big coats, those dogs are also great herding dogs and not so common in my area, but I do know people in Pennsylvania um, from when I used to be a, a farm writer in that area who use sheep dogs to herd their sheep instead of border collies. One of the problems with sheep dogs around here though is that they have that big high maintenance coat and we don't always, except up where it's colder, have a need for a dog with a coat like that. So sheep dogs tend to be more popular in areas where a dog needs to have a good coat. Um, and then the Australian cattle dog. This looks sort of like a German shepherd or a corgi with legs. And these herding dogs herd cattle. Um, they're famous for having quite a long life. And they're also a little bit less sociable than some of the other herding breeds um, in terms of getting along with lots of different people. They tend to be a little guardy as well, which is a good thing when you've got a herd of sheep in, or a herd of cattle in Australia. So these are amazing dogs, incredibly tenacious. I really, I like them a lot. Um, so how do you train a dog to herd? Well, first you have to get your dog used to being around the livestock. Uh, you want your dog to have, be comfortable around them. I know when I first brought Tristan to his first herding trial, they had a variety of livestock there, sheep and um, gooses and ducks and or geese. And Tristan was terrified of the geese, which is why I asked for him to herd the ducks the first day. 
and I was in a line with a whole lot of other people and their corgis waiting for their turn to work the livestock and Tristan was just in my arms shaking he was so afraid of the geese and their honking and they're so big and when five of them start flapping and my mother was attacked by geese once when she was delivering fuller brushes and she can tell you geese are pretty fierce you do not want to mess with a goose if you want to come out unpecked and unbeaten with their wings so um, Tristan was pretty nervous and he has not had many goose encounters since then except with the wild geese at my mom's old house and he was pretty comfortable with them and there was a huge herd of them or flock and you know he just because they were not used to being herded they were much less aggressive towards him and unlike some of the other dogs um, that would run up and get them all a flight Tristan really knew how to just kind of wheel around the circle and group them uh, which was interesting to see how he did that after he had actually herded some ducks. Um, the next thing you need to do is to teach your dog to herd something that's a real animal and ducks are usually what we start with unless you have a bigger dog and then you might have for instance a border collie working with sheep and have an older dog work with the younger dog. I don't know very many people who do herding who don't let the older dog teach the younger dog how to herd. It is really helpful and the dog does know how to herd. He just has to do it less enthusiastically than sometimes they want to because you don't want to scare out of the herded stock and have them go flying and flapping or running through the fence. You want your dog to be able to bring them to you or put them in a corner or separate one, whatever you need. You have to be quite expert at watching your dog's body language and understanding what he's doing. If you have seen Border Collies working, watching when they know to get down and when they know to get up. And a lot of sheep herders train the Border Collies to go down um, when the flock is getting agitated. And then the dog actually learns to do that. He knows he can read the flock and understand where he needs to be. And then, of course, you've all heard people whistling or saying commands to their dogs to go right or left so that they know where to bring the stock. And there are elaborate whistling schemes and different whistles for different dogs. Um, people who are really good herders will have different um, ways to communicate with two or three dogs herding a flock. And it's just brilliant how intelligent the dogs are when they're doing this work and to see what they do. And I posted yesterday i think it was on my page selling Morgan ptcst on facebook i did post um, what they call extreme herding where a group of people get together and they herd the sheep just like marching bands to make portraits of the mona lisa or to say merry christmas and there are many dogs working with many handlers getting those sheep positioned just right and then they get on a distant hilltop and take a picture of what the sheep have created and they also use lights around the sheep's uh, bodies <laughs> so that it can create different colored lights and create different sorts of pictures. It's really fascinating watching extreme herding and you can really see the brilliance of herding dogs when you watch some of these extreme herding pictures online. And then you can also take classes and shows for herding. If you go to a herding show, you can find someone there who can work with you. There are many people in my area who have made herding kind of a career for them and their dogs and they are happy to help work with your dog and then they do herding tests which they test your dog's instinct to herd and then as you pass the herding instinct test you can take greater and greater tests of uh, greater skills in the herding careers open to dogs and let's see there are many other things that you can do with your herding dogs you can her chickens with them. Um, Tristan gets a little, gets my mom's chickens a little bit too riled up, but he is really good at herding chickens. And it's interesting to watch other breeds of dogs. Um, you might remember me talking about the Cavalier King Spaniel, George, who suddenly exhibited speed like a greyhound and chased that chicken in circles until he ran her down and tried to bite her neck. Luckily, he's uh, an English toy or something, so his nose is really smushy, but the chicken was traumatized. <laughs> a herding dog would not do that. A herding dog is a chaser, not a catcher. <laughs> so your dog can learn to herd chickens, but you want him to not be too enthusiastic because chickens are a little bit more um, sensitive than, let's say, ducks. And so you need to not scare them. Um, 
A good herder will approach the chickens with his tail down and run in circles around them. Of course, this dog doesn't have a tail. And lots of herding dogs don't have tails. And they say that's because the tail could be trampled by the cattle and then the dog would be run over and that would be a bad thing. However, if you've ever seen a corgi with a tail, their tails curl up. So the chance of a cow stepping on a dog's tail is pretty slim. I think it's just a terrible thing that we dock their tails. Anyway, when you're working with the chickens, you want to keep your dog attentive to your commands and uh, you can make sure that he's not going to eat the chickens. Even my mom's schnauzer was more about waiting for my mom to tell her what to do than some of the cavaliers in the um, English Choice Spaniels that my sister has at her house. So here's another thing that you might not know. A friend told me about this. Cardigan corgis are the ones that conventionally come with tails. Their tails are more long and droopy. And cardigan corgis are also herding dogs. They're a little bigger than the Pembroke corgis that I have. And my friend Esther has always preferred cardigans. I don't know why <laughs> exactly, but when she first uh, got out of college, she got a cardigan corgi. Hi, Danny. I hope we're right side up today. I still don't know what happened yesterday. Um, she got a cardigan corgi and Esther was running nursery schools at the time and she started a wonderful nursery school that still is going even though she does no longer work there and she discovered she had it was a kind of a hands-on experience school they had ducks and chickens for the students and they did a lot of outdoor activities and she had her dog uh, I forget which one it was she had first maybe tweezers or spatula she gave them interesting names and she discovered along the way that cardigan corgis, one of their characteristics is that they have been used to mind the children. And that in fact, cardigan corgis can herd children. And having seen her corgis with her children, I am sure this is true. Cardigan corgis have an easygoing, kind of cute disposition that makes a kid attracted to them. And then they're a little bit bigger dog than this type of dog and for a toddler. They're the perfect size to kind of push him around a little bit without knocking him over. So in fact, cardigan corgis, among their many qualities, have been known to be useful for herding children. So herding dogs have many different kinds of jobs and they can do amazing work for you. And a lot of the border collies in my area are also therapy dogs and do visits to nursing homes and hospitals and schools. Um, also to educate people about um, herding. I know during the Big E back in September on Conversations with a Corgi, I posted a video um, at this big fair we have here in Springfield of a Border Collie working some ducks uh, at an event here in Springfield. And the herding community in New England is pretty uh, diverse and widespread. There are herding dogs across all of the New England states because, you know, up in Vermont and New Hampshire, there's dairy cattle and pretty rugged terrain. And like my mom's chickens, they have learned to come in when she just calls them. And lots of cattle do that too. But if the weather is bad, or if it's snowing really hard and you can't see the cattle, you might be missing one. Or if in the spring when they might be calving, you might be missing one. And that's when a herding dog can be a great help to you. So herding dogs do lots of different jobs today. A lot of their work is uh, for entertainment and exhibition of their skills um, in this country, but there are plenty of herding dogs still working. Oh, you have two corgis with tails. They hurt each other. <laughs> yes, I'm glad I'm right side up today. Boy, I don't know what happened yesterday. My phone is just having some trouble. It's been reacting slowly. I think it just didn't turn when I turned it. So anyway, yeah, herding dogs are great. And one of the things that you need to know about them if you have them as pets is that they will herd you. And some people think this is a real hazard if you're a senior citizen. I know myself when I've been in the kitchen cooking and I'm walking back and forth to the sink, to the fridge, to the stove, um, Tristan has to be on his toes to make sure that I don't walk on him. And I have a friend with a kitchen floor that's almost the same color as him, a wooden floor. Uh, I think it's a Brazilian cherry. And boy, you cannot see that corgi <laughs> on the floor. And my friend walked on him like three times before he banned him from the kitchen. And it is a bit of a problem when you have a small herding dog to make sure that you don't step on them. And one of the other interesting things about a lot of the herding breeds, they're often you know, a solid color with a lot of white trim. Part of that is this uh, white on Tristan's neck 
makes him easy to see when he's lost in the brush out ahead of me. I can always find him because of this white patch, which Border Collies and Aussies and lots of the other herding dogs have. The other thing a lot of herding dogs have, which mine doesn't, but if he had one, he would, is a white tip on the end of their tail so that you can find them as well um, by the white on their tail. And they also, most of the herding breeds have pretty thick coats so they can run through brush and briars and brambles and come out unscathed and not have any injuries. So they're, they're um, agile dogs, they're athletic dogs. Um, in spite of what we've done to breed German Shepherds to be less than healthy moving dogs, most of the herding breeds are really strong and athletic dogs. And it's a pretty uh, nice community to be involved in. I know anywhere I go to any kind of dog event and I have my Corgi with me, People will come up to me who have other herding breeds and talk to me about corgis and tell me about their sheepdog or their um, their herding dogs of other breeds. And it's pretty interesting to see what they have in common. And Tristan's dad, actually, in New Jersey, still does herding. And he is a pretty high-level herding dog working. I think he helps bring in the horses. My dog, Winston, used to know how to go out to find my horse in a herd and bring my horse to me. The horse and Winston, according to animal communicators, were not friends because the horse resented <laughs> being bossed around by a corgi. Um, Comet, my next corgi, not so much of a herder. He really was more of a snuggly lap dog than any kind of a herding dog. But Winston and Tristan both um, certainly would follow me for hours on trail rides with their little short legs um, all through the woods and everywhere because they were herding my horse while they were following us. And Tristan, he has not had a horse for a lot of his life, so he is not so much of a herder and he's not as smart about horses' legs. But even Comet, who wasn't much of a herder, he, he would get under horses when I was working on them and he just instinctively knew when he needed to move out from under them during that working process, doing body work on the horse, so that he could get to an area where he was safe before the horse reacted. So these dogs are smart and fast and intelligent. And if you're going to be at work for eight or nine hours a day, um, that might not be the best breed for you unless you have a couple of them so they can entertain each other while you're gone. And that's part of the jobs that herding dogs have. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi. And we will be back tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi where we'll continue our talk about some of the jobs that dogs have. I did get my sister's book in the mail, and we will have an announcement about that at some point and a discussion about her book. And I'm hoping that my cards will be orderable tomorrow. If that's true, we'll talk more about them. And we'll continue our series of herding dogs right up through the holidays or, and dogs with jobs, not just herding dogs. <laughs> Today it was herding dogs. Tomorrow will be some of the other jobs that dogs have. So thanks for joining us. Stay warm. It is very cold in the Northeast. I tried to take a walk yesterday and... Whoa, it's chilly. Biscuits. Are you cute in your corgi bandana? It's a very cute bandana for a little corgi. Thanks for joining us today. Um, stay warm and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.